a boy. Yes, sir. Yep. You like know, the, off the field. I like to quote the great book of Marvel with great power comes greater responsibility. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, without a doubt. What's the difference between, because this goes on the same line of the conversation. What What's the difference between a player that progresses in your program versus the player that exponentially progresses? Um, work ethic, uh, uh, consistency, uh, compliance, buy-in. Um, now, I'm not going to lie. I do believe in genetics. You know, some kids are natural athletes. You know, some kids will always struggle. You know, I, I always give credits to the kids because, you know, again, I mean, it's it's on them. So definitely uh, genetics do play a big part. Um, biggest thing I think is, again. Do you think it deals with, sorry to interrupt you, no. but do you think it deals with being tall? Or it do you think it deals with, be. like, fast, Leverage helps. fast twitch muscles? Right. Helps. It helps. Helps. It so, helps, like, five, a 5'11 pitcher versus a 6'4 pitcher. I'm taking the 6'4 pitcher over the 5'11 pitcher. Not necessarily. I mean, athleticism plays a part, strength, all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, I mean, like the old uh, Manu Bowl, he would have been throwing right. 200 miles per hour because he was, what, <laughs> right. seven foot tall. Yeah. So it's not that easy. You know, it, you know um, and I, I just joke with the kids, too, and it's, it's not like mass equals gas like you always hear. Right. Because sumo wrestlers would be throwing 500 miles per hour. It's true. So it's just every kid has different needs. Um, we try our best to give them exactly what they need. But, I mean, I think most kids – who progress pretty quickly, they uh, trust the process. What, where That's do you the old put, cliche? I mean, where do you put like, what type of value do you put on consistency? Because I think that is one of the most undervalued and under talked oh. about assets ever. It's boring. And no one wants to talk about boring. it. It's absolutely it's boring. boring. I'm, I'm starting to sleep while you guys are talking to us about consistency. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> right, when you, right when you said it, I, my eyes started glazing. I'm like, oh it's crap, true. Dave, way to well, bring this conversation full and that's circle. the thing too, is I, I pride ourselves on, there's no flash. There's no magic potion. There's no flash. Um, consistency is everything. I mean, obviously, knowing when to like call that audible when a kid needs something different. But I mean, like consistency is everything. But it, but it's so tough because people want it now. They want that magic pill. So I've gotten to the point where I used to kind of worry about like losing kids because they weren't seeing results now. Right. But I I get to the point where if we lose them, we never really wanted them. You know, true, and it's not going to be great for culture. You're not for everybody. I, you can't I don't be. worry at all about it anymore because yeah. I know that if guys stick to the program, um, guys who are consistent, they're going to see results. And that's not just velocity; that's obviously pitchability, and, that, and that's something else too. Is um, explain I, a pi- explain pitchability for the layman listener on on this because I actually did not know this until I started hanging out with Dave a lot. Yep. Um, explain pitchability. Having the feel for pitching. I mean, as an overall pitcher, hitting spots, um, knowing when to throw the off-speed stuff, knowing how to read hitters, um, command versus control. I mean, it's it's a lost art, unfortunately, because it is very, very hard to create. I'm not saying you can't create it, but uh, one thing I was talking about, too, is um, I wish there was a way that we could coach these athletes on the field more. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen because, obviously, October through February, we're, we're stuck inside. Um, we're not their high school coaches. We're not their select coaches. But actually, you know, trying to help them through the on-field stuff, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's, you know, setting up hitters, which, again, um, our plan this offseason is to add, add a classroom time. And what that means is probably once every three weeks um, we'll take time where we all the kids in a classroom. Um, first things first, we'll basically kind of walk them through each phase or each new phase, mm-hmm. but then also pick a topic on, like, how to set hitters up, you know, um, you know. Uh, basically uh, trying to read hitters' tendencies. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, like, some of that stuff, if not all of it, needs to be done on the field. Yeah. You know, and, you know, some kids have it because they just have it. Some kids have it because maybe dad was kind of pushing pitchability or uh, mechanics or something like that at, at a, a very early age. But at the same time, I mean, it's 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 also very, very difficult to teach kids pitchability and, you know, how to throw strikes. I think some kids, unfortunately – for whatever reason, may struggle with that their entire career. You know, it's, it's tough. I mean, so you know, it's it, it almost gets to where you know people think hey, if a kid's not throwing strikes, he's not being taught to throw strikes. It's more than just movements. It's a mentality. It's confidence. Like it's very, very hard to throw strikes if you've never really done it at a young age. Yeah, I think you know? a lot of it's having just been there a bunch of times and doing it over and over and over. I mean, right. 
uh, we are seeing an influx in training, but then I also feel like sometimes we're seeing a, uh, a reduction in games played nowadays. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's kind of that give and take, like you, you can't expect a guy to have high pitch ability if they've only thrown 30 innings in the past two years, without a doubt, you know, it's just, you haven't been there. You haven't seen enough situations over and over and over to understand innately within two seconds of what I should do with that next pitch because of the 20 things that I just saw in the last three seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really, really hard to expect that out of a young. Catch new episodes of the Tiger Interview Series on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and you can watch it on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to get notified of future episodes by setting notifications to all. And check out our website, rawlingstigers.com, for club, baseball, and softball information.